hello everyone welcome back to my channel i am the joyful cook and today i'm going to share how to make nigerian patty fish this is a great side dish for your patty jollof rice fried rice it can be served on its own with a chilled drink it can be served with abacha so if you want to see how i made this then keep on watching so I've just returned from the fish market. The fishmonger cut and scraped the fish for me. This is called croaker fish and it is mostly the kind of fish we use here for parties. So what I do is I just tell them to help me scrape off the scales because it comes with scale. So I don't have to stress about that when I get home. So next I'm pouring some hot water over the fish so it can soften up faster. It was still frozen and I needed to go through the faster route. You can also leave this on your kitchen counter to thaw completely before washing and seasoning. So I'm going to give it one quick rinse and add some salt and then rinse for like two or three times before I start seasoning the fish. The salt here is acting as a disinfectant, so that's why I'm using it to wash the fish. I wanted to spare you all the trouble of washing the fish or the process of washing the fish. But the last time I made a fish video, so many people wanted to see how I clean the fish, how I clean the sink. So, enjoy! the final rinse i rinse out the bowl thoroughly and then place the fish back into the bowl because i'm going to be seasoning the fish right in that same bowl next i'm going to make sure i clean up that area anytime you work with fish please clean up the area if you have vinegar use vinegar if not soap and water will do just make sure you clean up very well so that your house will not be smelling fishy <laughs> everywhere is clean it is time to season the fish to the fish i'm going to add some curry powder if you're not adding curry powder to your fish i don't know what you are doing it can elevate your fish to a whole new level next i'll add some seasoning cube and some fish seasoning now with the fish seasoning you don't need to add garlic and ginger powder but in the absence of that just add small minced garlic and ginger and then toss it around to combine as usual i'm going to leave the list of ingredients their measurements and how i portion everything in the description box area so check it out you will also notice i did not add salt and that's because the seasoning cube the fish seasoning contains salt you don't want your fish to be too salty so i covered it and let it sit for four hours and this is four hours later and now it is time to fry so because i'm going to be using a very wide pot i'll be using the two burners for even distribution of heat it is best to use a wide pot for this so you have space to move your spatula around see don't talk about this pot this pot i am not throwing it away anytime soon even if it's spoiled i will patch it there's a story behind that pot <laughs> so i have some used oil that i've poured into the pot i'll top up with some more oil because you need to deep fry this fish so i'm going to be deep frying the fish with a lot of oil once it heats up i add the fish gradually and fry let me tell you one thing i've learned with croaker fish when you're frying croaker fish don't fry it so dry because when it cools down it's going to harden up some more so don't just fry it dry from the onset okay and when you start frying within the first 15 minutes don't bother checking it as you can see i did this just to show you if you check it within the first few minutes it's going to start breaking up 
um, in the oil. So I just fry for a straight 25 to 30 minutes. Because I've been doing this for some time now, I know exactly when to go in and check. Also depends on the quantity of frying. So I cannot say fry for 10 or 15 minutes. But with this pot and with this quantity I added, I fried for about 30 minutes and it was just perfect. But I'll say the best way to know that your fish is perfectly fried is when it easily pulls up from the pot. It will no longer be sticking to the pot. Yeah, that's how you know your fish is perfectly fried. So after frying, I'm going to carefully pour this oil into my celebrity pot and let the oil cool down there before I transfer it into the gallon. It is not a waste. You can use it to cook your stew, use to fry chicken and it's going to bang because of the flavor from the fish. So I'm going to, you know, wash the pot and get it ready for the next step. To stew the fish, I used half of this tomato paste. I did not finish everything. I used some tomato sauce. You can replace the tomato sauce with fresh tomatoes if you don't have this in the house. You'll need some scotch bonnet pepper, onion, and some red bell pepper. I'll leave everything and their measurements in the description box. You will also need garlic and ginger so i'm going to go ahead and blend all of this together and i'll see you after it's so you blended. want to roughly blend your peppers even though i think my own was a little bit too smooth yeah but at least you can still see some tiny specks of pepper in there so blend it roughly and then set it aside next i'm going to open the tomato paste and bring out the one the quantity i'm going to be using Next, open up the tomato sauce. Add some oil to a pot and let it heat up. I had two onion. I'm going to saute one in the hot oil for about 30 seconds. Then I'll add the tomato paste and fry until it is no longer tangy. After frying for about 10 minutes, I'll add the tomato sauce now. Then I'll add the blended bell pepper, the onion, garlic and ginger puree and then stir everything to combine properly. I know some people are saying this is a lot of oil, it's a lot of oil, I know but I really needed to fry this sauce properly and I need a lot of oil to do that. After frying the sauce, you can scoop out the excess oil if you want. So yeah, so I'm going to cover it now and let it simmer on low heat checking all the time so it does not burn so i'll just keep stirring with five minutes intervals till it is done so i continue to do that until the sauce was completely done and you know it's done when the tomato is completely separated from the oil and i did not add any seasoning or salt up until this point because if you add it earlier than now it's going to start burning so and i'm also going very light on the seasoning remember our fish was properly marinated so if you season the sauce too much you're going to end up with a salty fish which only you may just be the one to eat it <laughs> so yeah i'm just going to add one seasoning cube thyme and curry powder and stir before adding the fish so at this point you can scoop off the oil and use it for your nigerian egg sauce stew beans even obono soup egusi soup this oil will be 
great for it so i'm going to stir that one last time but i did not scoop out all the oil because i wanted the sauce to still be loose since i was not going to add water so i'm going to add the fish into the sauce and then carefully coat the fish with the sauce after adding the fish into the sauce i let the fish simmer in that sauce for about five to seven minutes on low heat that in turn will kind of soften the fish some more and everything is just going to be succulent and so so delicious For some freshness and color, I'll drizzle in some red and green bell pepper and some scallions as well. The green pepper especially adds a lot of flavor to this dish. As soon as I add the veggies, I give it one quick stir and that's it. I turn off the heat and our fish is ready. I'm going to scoop it out now and it is ready to be served with your patty jollof rice, your patty fried rice um, as a side dish. With anything, it goes so well and this recipe is particularly delicious and a must try. I had some more fish to coat, so I'm going to continue until everything is done. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you tried it out and how well you enjoyed it. Send me pictures on Instagram at The Joyful Cook. Don't forget to subscribe, click the like button and share this video and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.